he gave everything away and he went on a seven year pilgrimage he turned his back to the world to the riches of the world he went after freedom he had everything I am sure at that time besides his wife he could have had any woman he wanted he could have had many mistresses he had land castles palaces gold silver jewelry wine everything yet he turned his back to all of it he even turned his back to his children and that's something is very dear to all of us but he turned his back to his attachments to the worldly attachments and he went towards the light the source the calling that which was calling him and he wanted to become free but what is this freedom how do you what is this freedom that one gives away everything in order to arrive to it and the price you have to understand anything of value in this life has a price and if something of value given to you for nothing and it doesn't matter how precious it is you don't value it and God must know this very well better than anybody else that's why you have to work on yourself and be dedicated to reach God that's why she just doesn't show herself to everybody because they're just not worthy to to see God as simple as that you have to become worthy for the presence for her majesty the supreme being to show her beautiful face to you so in a way we call it purifying in many religions or spiritual groups they're talking about purification to become pure in order for her majesty to give you a smile to give you a kiss to touch you to invite you to dance with her so there's a price to pay and you have to make that decision with yourself back in the day when I was die-hard spiritual seeker the price was because of the lack of communication that we have today because of not having internet and not having instant access to teachers different teachings from all over the world the way we have now you had to go through a pilgrimage and even though it was in a modern time I left my life I left my career work family making money whatever friends and went to India and not knowing where I'm gonna land how things gonna work out whether I'm gonna get to the teacher or whatever I didn't even know where Papaji lived I just heard that he's in Lucknow and my friend said go to Carl Carlton Hotel in Lucknow and you will find him so based on this piece of information I left to India no address nothing else no last name just name 
Papaji, Carlton Hotel, and Lucknow. And I left everything and I went to India, but I didn't go to India first. I had to go to Iran because I had no money. I had gone bankrupt. So I arrived in Tehran, Iran with $50 in my pocket. And my sister had bought me a one-way ticket, hoping that I may stay in Iran and like other good Iranian boys who came back from the West, I would get married and settle there and and be another robot like the rest. But I was bound to get to the master and I wanted freedom. But anyway, somehow this is a long story of how many miracles happened and how I ended up getting to the master. But finally you get to the, at the feet of the master. You arrive there. Well, it's not like, okay, I'm here and everyone's waiting for you and they threw a red carpet for you and waiting. So what? You're here. So as hundreds of other spiritual seekers that they found their way here, wait in line. Well, I want to see the master. Well, the master's not well. He's not seeing anybody till next week. So now you're in this village and you have to find yourself a place to stay and all these things and you have to wait. And then there is satsang. You have to be there early in the morning. It's winter time. It was very cold. You're freezing. You don't have proper clothing. So you have to buy stuff and go wait in line and everyone's waiting. And then finally you get in. So it was so different than today. Today we have become very spoiled. If your spiritual teacher is late or is not available or whatever, everyone starts complaining. Where is he? Where are you? How come you're not here? How come you don't pay attention to me? How come you don't look at me? Back in the day was a different story. You didn't have access to these teachers so easily. So you had to work hard to get to them. It was a price you had to pay. And if you're on a journey towards awakening and you want to be around the master in India, that means you have to leave your life in the West and go to India. And there was no internet, so you can't make a living. So you have to go on your own account, financing, time, youth, energy, and go wait till the master looks at you or talks to you or give you darshan. Today we can easily access spiritual teachers online or they constantly traveling around the world so you can go see them. So that was a part of the price we had to pay for it. But that's not the only thing. There is more than that. It's the dedication to freedom. It's your focus. And a lot of that is lost. And many spiritual seekers become very spoiled and lost their focus. And they jump from here to there and there to this place. That's why in so many ways it's kind of spoiled. It's become fashionable, it's trendy to dress kind of spiritual, to have a mala around you, to dress, to put your yoga stuff on, have a little incense, have a crystal, have some feather, spiritual jewelry, spiritual earrings, everything. So have the appearance of spirituality. 